Good morning and welcome back to Simon Outdoors. Out in the woods today, going back to where I sat beside the river the other day. I was going to come out on my own, and you know, that would have been nice. But the wife was complaining, so I had to bring these two out with me. So, I won't be able to spend as long as I wanted to, because even with the coats on, the coats are only covering the backs, it's the bellies that need some coverage. Because they ain't got much fur on, on their bellies, for some reason. So, we're wandering down there, basically the other end of this field the river. I've just uploaded some editing software last night so I'm going to give that a try. There might be adverts on it and watermarks but we'll see. So right there's some more people down this path so I'll stop it for now and I'll join you back later. So you join me again at uh, three local ponds the little dogs are trying uh, the best to drag me on my backside. Here's one of the ponds. I think there's another one just over there. And then the third is just this way through the trees. See some kids put a rope swing down there in the distance. If my arm gets dragged, it's because of the dog lead. That's the shaking of the camera as well. Right, let's have a little stroll down here. I'll try. I'm trying my best not to fall over. Because it's a bit icy underneath the snow in places, especially on these rocks here. I know these want to come out for a walk, but I was going to take them later. So uh, I got to do the recording I wanted to do and have quality time and then take these out later so they can mess about. The little puppy is absolutely loving the snow on the back garden. She's just constantly eating the stuff. Uh, Sally, the older dog, the white one's not so bothered. That's a bit better. It's a bit deeper leaves. Well, the actual path I want to go is over that way, but we'll go down here. Woo, steady. They just bolt off. <laughs> it's not a bungee cord, it's a dog lead. When I came down here the other day, there was just the one solitary duck. That's another thing coming down here with the dogs if you want to do any photography or recording. The little brown one's going to bark like hell and scare everything away. With coming out of the house and the house being warm, I was debating whether I'd got too many layers on. I was uh, quite warm, debated on taking a fleece off, but uh, I'm glad I haven't. So I know once I'm sat still, it's going to cool off. Well, this is the, th the third pond, and then over toward this side. There's a pipe where it flows out of the pond and into the River Morn. These two behaving nicely. Yes, I've got a sniffle now. My wife thinks I'm mad coming out. Uh, she still thinks I'm even madder planning on going camping next week. I'll go this way around the tree, I don't want to get dragged into the water. But I might not be going camping in Derbyshire because if this snow doesn't go away, some of the roads that I have to use are very windy. And uh, this is the pipe, flows through here, down there. Oh, some of these dogs are in water. He's had a very cold bath, but uh, yeah, there's some signs down there. It does actually say keep dogs on a lead because it's a, 
a wildlife park. So, where it looks lovely in the snow. Plenty of silver birch, a lot of oak trees. So. All right, we'll head back in that direction. I'll see you later. Welcome back to Salmon Outdoors. So because I've got these two, I've decided not to uh, sit by the river like I was planning to. Uh, I've decided to come back up to the hill where I found the tinder from last time. Because there's not many places down by the river I can tie these two up. So, oh, she's having a great time. She loves the snow. I think I'll put a sheet here, I'll have a fire just here, and we'll have a cup of tea. So uh, I'll go and get some tinder. But don't want this branch in the way. <laughs> So I think I've got a good little bunch of sticks like last time. I think there's enough there.
over, so not not that over. I did bring a tart with me today, but uh, as the stove stopped, I won't bother using it. Right, so let's get this fire going. do with a bit of a, a thermal mat uh, it's a bit cold on the bum got a little bit of wax Vaseline Sorry, <laughs> a little bit of cotton wool mixed with Vaseline in this Kinder Egg. In wet weather conditions, I used to make them. And if you if you ram it full of Vaseline and cotton wool and burnt the whole thing, I know people are not a fan of burning plastic, but uh, it will burn for about 40 minutes. Also notice while coming up to this part to do a little recording that there's uh, no footprints in the snow, so it means that I'm unlikely to get a, a dog walker coming this way. Might even use a bit of magnesium today. Some more birch bark. These twigs had snow all over them. The dogs are being silly now, wandering around. One of the videos years ago, um, the little puppy, while uh, on camera, was trying to eat all my snaps. So <laughs> some people said that was good and that I should take them more often because that was funny. With how much wood I used last time, I think there's plenty here to get a hot drink going. I've got plenty of birch bark. I'm surrounded by silver birch trees as well, if I need to get any more. But well, this dread dead wood is covered with lichen um, which is retaining water and dampness on the outside so it's requiring a bit of birch bark to generate some heat to dry that out before it will start burning the, the wood I didn't bring the Laplander with me today but I suppose uh, another garden tool that would be useful today would be a pair of secateurs for cutting little things like this. I mean you can easily break them. Some slightly thicker ones. You know, they'd be useful. 
I've just been joined by a couple of robins behind the camera. So, put everything back in the fire kit now. safe and in here I've got spare rod and magnesium shotgun cartridge matchbox I've got my fire piston from bushcraft tools birch bark fatwood jute twine cotton wool candle King Alfred's cake coal fungus bearing block for a bow drill so quite a few areas covered with the tools that I've got in there the dogs are shivering but they're daft enough to not sit on this sheet to bear in mind how long this cup of tea takes <laughs> because I noticed the other day after 33 minutes precisely 4 gig of uh, data it cut out on my phone regardless of having a bigger memory card I suppose when I got the other bits of birch bark on it I should have kept on top with the twigs with it being damp. Absolutely beautiful out today. Yeah, the, the girls are probably bouncing around as the little robin keeps coming around here. He's probably thinking I've got something for him to eat. Oh, it's just because I've disturbed the earth and he's coming looking for the grubs that I've disturbed. Like last time when I got the kettle down by the river and I put two sticks under it so the heat would go under the kettle. This time, because we're on a slope, I've got some of the twigs underneath the kettle so the heat's still going under as well as the side. I've kept the old scour that I used to clean the kettle with as well at home uh, just for cleaning my stuff now because when you're cleaning the soot off it ruins the scour instantly. I know the 
the cheap the little sponge pads with the, the rough stuff on the top but uh, you still get through a lot if, if you intend like I do to be out in the woods every day you notice you might think I've used quite a bit of birch bark to get this fire going but well, something else you might have noticed as well I ain't even made any feather sticks you don't need feather sticks and I didn't need the cotton wool and Vaseline neither it just helped I could have easily done it just by scraping the birch bark and putting birch bark on top once I got a flame to get that going Once I've done here, like the other day, I will hide these dead branches. I'll put them to one side where I know where they are, and I can use them again. I'll put the fire out properly, and I'll cover it back up with the leaves and soil. woodland to the right I would like to explore there another day because if I am going to have a wild camp it seems pretty dense in there and that's somewhere where I'd think about going into I'll take this opportunity now to take some photographs. <laughs> Well, the camera says we've been running for 15 minutes. So this will probably be one film in its own. These two wallies here have knocked their water over. So that's their fault. Leave my black current out in case I want a second drink. <sighs> Come on, get on here. Get on here. Get on the mat. That's it. I will give these another drink when I get the other water bottle out to put the fire out. Yeah, I bet you'd love to be next to the fire, wouldn't you? What have you got on your foot? A, like a sticky bud. Um, I think they're actually what they are is, is teasels, small teasels. Yes, I know. You're lovely. Aren't you? Come here. Here's a hug. I know you want to warm up by my fire. I know. I 
love being outdoors. That's a fantastic rucksack, by the way. It's called a Terra Peak. Uh, that's the name on it. I think it's about a 35, 40 litre rucksack. Um, a guy two years ago messaged me after I just started doing YouTube and uh, his name was Neil well his name still is Neil and he sent me the rucksack with uh, some other useful stuff to help me getting getting started again because I started the leather work to help provide a, a means for me to be able to buy new equipment or just equipment because I packed up going outdoors years ago just got doing different things I got into my motorcycling got into my shooting and uh, yeah thanks to that guy I've got a decent rucksack now I know that's now my day sack and I've got um, a Berghaus rucksack but I actually prefer that better because the waist strap is longer it's more comfortable and a big, big factor is it sits lower on my back. It sits on my hips. Is the Berg House is a short one, and it sits right up on my back. And and the the waist strap instead of going around my, my belly where my belt normally goes, and this one goes, it sort of sits up here, and it only just fits me. Um, so although it can carry a lot in it, it's not very nice to have on your back. It really hurts my back because of my my lower back problems. So, um, yeah, I think one day will be nice to to change and um, hopefully one day invest in a, a very comfortable rucksack. Like this is very comfortable, but bigger so I can carry more stuff when I want to go for a two-day camp or even a one-day camp because when I take this and I go for a one-day camp, I normally carry another baggage or even people have known me to use a, a sack barrow, a trolley because um, I just can't physically carry it so. so when I've had my brew I might go and have a wander that way where some people just came a minute ago and said hello they were like joggers or something like that I think they were uh, and just go and have an explore you know, my wife's gone to work, the kids aren't coming home till later. So, yeah, just have an explore, I think. It's uh, smoking. I don't know whether that's the water or... Yeah, we've got some heat in there. And I've got some bits in my... Uh, tea now. But you can't come out to the woods and moan that, you know. I've got dirty hands and there's bits in me tea and it's nature. But it's a bit of wood so I'm surprised it's not floating actually. <laughs> I'll just sit it there on the snow. I'll drink it shortly. I think the last stick of wood I've got is this piece, which is dead but quite thick. So, not one I'm going to be able to snap easily. So, what I might do is forget this one for another time. Just into there. That'll do. And I'll gather up this fire. So. You don't look happy, darling, do you, Sally? This is Sally. And this little one here, Scruffy. So thanks for watching Simon Outdoors. I'm going to enjoy my tea now. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks and bye-bye. <laughs>